January the 1st of this year is not just the start of a 2019, but also marks the 40th anniversary of the issuing of the message to compatriots in Taiwan in Chinese, Gao Taiwan Tongbao Shu. It's also the 40th anniversary of the U.S.-China relationship. Today, President Xi Jinping attended the commemoration of a 40th anniversary and delivered a speech at the gathering. How will Taiwan react? What can we expect for further cooperation between the two sides of the Taiwan Strait? And what are the challenges and opportunities for future cross-street relations? To discuss these issues and more, I'm very happy to be joined in the studio by Su Ge, Chairman of the China Pacific Economic Cooperation Council, and Zhong Ho Tao, Research Fellow with the Chinese Academy of Social Sciences. We shall also speak to Jana Lei, the former Taiwan legislator and managing director of Azu Management Limited via Skype in Malaysia. That's our topic. This is a dialogue. I'm Yang Ray. Welcome to our studio discussion. Here is actually a very um, important brainstorming following the historic speech delivered by President Xi Jinping to commemorate the 40th anniversary of that important message. Now, I notice a very interesting word. Yes. That's used repeatedly by President Xi Jinping in his policy presentation, rejuvenation mm -hmm. of the nation. Now, what does that mean for the reunification across the Taiwan Street? Uh, well, actually, I really like the one word you used, historic. So now when we uh, commemorate the 40th anniversary of the uh, letter or the message to the compatriots of Taiwan, Though a lot of historical memories would come to mind, for instance, 40 years ago. And uh, that was the time when Chinese mainland embarked upon the road of opening to the outside world and uh, reforms. And then uh, it was the time just to uh, have the normalization and establishment of relations with the United States, China's external relations marked a historic change. And at the moment, there was the issuing of the letter to the compatriots. It was now issued by uh, Mr. Yi Jianying, yeah, former chairman the National of the Standing Committee of the National People's Congress. Yeah. So now and, uh, I think that when we recall that part of history and then we come to today's uh, speech made by President Xi Jinping, now it feels that we feel that uh, we are now entering into a new age because this is the time when the Chinese nation is preparing for the launching of the, uh, a new march, so to speak. And, uh, two, and uh, we, are now have, uh, we now have the new tasks of, uh, of important agendas for, uh, uh, summed up by, by the two centennials. And then uh, today, President Xi Jinping uses the great rejuvenation of the Chinese people, of the Chinese nation, as the, as the not only as a backdrop, but, only, but as the banner, as the goal to call upon the other side of the Taiwan Strait, to call upon people on both sides of the Taiwan Strait, to call upon political parties, to think about the future, great future, great rejuvenation of the Chinese nation. I think that's very important and very significant. Looking back in our review of the cross-grid relations, don't you think, Dr. Zhong, that uh, we should marvel at the huge success by four generations of the Chinese leadership, starting from Mr. Deng Xiaoping, Jiang Zemin, Hu Jintao, and now President Xi Jinping, to manage the stability across the Taiwan Street in a very constructive way, in a peaceful manner, of course. And that has somehow guaranteed the success of China's uh, deep economic integration and opening up. Uh, I totally agree with you on this point. Uh, yes, the peaceful development of cross trade relationship indeed make great contribution for the uh, modernization of Chinese mainland. And actually, those Taiwanese investors also make great 
contribution in Chinese mainland, help Chinese mainland, its economic growth, its own, uh, economic development. And at the same time, I think the uh, peaceful development of cross trade relations also do make great contribution for the development of Taiwan's economic growth. If there is no peaceful development, I think the, uh, uh, Taiwan will not able to uh, enjoy its rampant uh, economic growth. Despite the tone of uh, reconciliation implied in the letter to compatriots of Taiwan, let me cross over to Joanna Lei, who's standing by in Malaysia via Skype. Now, despite the message to the compatriots, the U.S. Congress quickly passed the Taiwan Relations Act the same year. Did it come as a major surprise to people like you in Taiwan in those days? Well, certainly I think it is important to recount the history from 1979, because that is the year the United States severed the relationship with Taiwan and established diplomatic ties with mainland China. It is also the year that the United States passed the so-called Taiwan Relations Act that dictates and defines future relationship of the United States, mainland China, and Taiwan. So I think it is very um, strategically important for this discussion to focus on 1979, which is 40 years of peaceful resolution of Taiwan Strait issues. And in mainland China's term, it's 40 years of pushing a grand strategy of um, peaceful unification. Instead of just focusing on 92 consensus, which is 25 years, you, you may recall that uh, Taiwan has repeatedly negated the call to recognize 92 consensus, and now Xi Jinping has brought it back in history to a 40 years of attempt, efforts, endeavors to peacefully resolve the issue across Taiwan Strait. So I think it's critically important, and it's picking a very important historical moment, a turning point. Ambassador Su, mm. are you surprised by the defiance of Tsai Ing-wen, leader of Taiwan, in her response to the policy speech by Mr. Xi Jinping, because she vehemently and resolutely denied, as she did over and over, the one China principle, particularly the one country, two system approach by the mainland? Uh, well, not uh, really. Because when we look at the uh, party charter of DPP, Demo Democratic Progressive Party, there is a fatal clause. And, uh, and uh, saying that uh, this party's goal is to achieve so-called Taiwan independence. Uh, I think that for uh, and just now our friend from, from Taiwan says about the last 40 years, I think the, when we think of the uh, uh, cross-strait relations in the last four years, last 40 years, we should keep in mind that uh, one country, two systems. And this, uh, uh, the, the phrase, first came to the, uh, ins to, to the, to, to the site of uh, uh, people in the, the world because uh, uh, before 1979, the mainland side only uses liberation of Taiwan as the slogan. But then, it was altered into uh, beginning from January uh, 1979. It was uh, the policy was altered into one country, two systems, peaceful reunification. It's not just the unification, peaceful reunification, because there is only one country in the world. world. And, uh, and because of the, uh, of the uh, international the change in international uh, uh, arena, China and the United States established diplomatic relations. China wanted to have a reform and to, to be open to the outside world. And as our friend uh, Cheng has uh, said that uh, both mainland and Taiwan benefited from this historical period of 40 years. I think that for United States and China, we were able to develop a economy, economic relationship that is complementary to both sides. Those who followed very closely the development across the Taiwan Strait uh, would argue strongly that in fact the factor in the U.S.-China relationship is Washington. 
Exactly. It is Washington. It is exactly Washington that has prevented the two sides from achieving peaceful reunification. And in his uh, latest policy speech, President Xi Jinping said, "We would never ever uh, renounce the use of force and non-peaceful means in addressing the issue of Taiwan." Obviously, in the end statement, he was referring to the role that Washington played. By the way. President Donald Trump has recently signed into law the so-called uh, Asia Reassurance Initiative Act, along with other bills in, in the White House. What does that mean for the future of Taiwan? Uh, I think that means uh, the United States uh, will continue to plan the so-called Taiwan cards. Uh, about uh, 70 years ago, the United States had been playing those cards, and this has been particularly after the outbreak of the Korean War in the exactly 1950s. in the 1950s, and even in the 1990s. At that time, the so-called Taiwan Crisis, the Third Taiwan Crisis. The, so the United States just take Taiwan as uh, uh, a bargain to uh, press to press Chinese mainland to give, exert more pressure on Chinese mainland. Especially now, the United States is trying to construct a so-called India-Asia uh, Pacific, India-Pacific strategy. So uh, it is just taking Taiwan as a bargaining chip to ask the Chinese mainland to take more compromise on some economic issue, on trade issue, on some other issues. So uh, in this, uh, I mean, uh, the United States will continue to play this card, but I think that would be a bad news for Taiwan Authority, for Taiwan people. They will become uh, a, a victim for the uh, the the the, uh, the friction between Chinese mainland and the United States. I think the Taiwan Authority and Taiwan people should become much more clever, should be much uh, smart enough to know where they should stand. They should know that uh, it is much better for them to keep balance between Chinese man and Taiwan, they should not uh, over, uh, uh, over bank on the United States. They should know to keep a uh, balance way. Open secret, Joanna, is uh, Washington has uh, formally established uh, mainland China as the strategic competitor in, in the end statement, enemy number one of the United States in the foreseeable future. Having said this, uh, uh, we, we were also discussing impact of the uh, Asia Reassurance Initiative Act uh, passed by the Congress jointly and signed into law by President Trump. Don't you think there is somehow a shade of difference in the tone and wording of uh, Madame Tsai Ing-wen in her New Year's address about the cross strait relations? For the very first time, we are aware that Tsai Ing-wen used Republic of China in Taiwan, a, a phrase that she was never able to use before. What does that mean? Well, the Republic of China in Taiwan was used by the prior KMT government, and she is very aware of its political significance. Let's take a look at what Donald Trump had signed into law, which is the Asia Reassurance Initiative Act. In the Article 209, the United States is to support the close economic, political, and security relationship with Taiwan. Under that same section, very rarely they mentioned all three U.S. principles, which is Taiwan Relations Act, Taiwan and China joint communiques, the three joint communiques, as well as Ronald Reagan's six assurances. All of them are directed towards Republic of China in Taiwan. So if Tsai Ing-wen doesn't recognize that name that she could uttered before, then she wouldn't even have this reassurance of uh, security. We so were also one. aware. But number Joanna. two, it is very clearly that mainland China is keenly in the United States mindset when they play the Taiwan card. And Taiwan is once again being played by mainland China, but by the United States as a way to gain certain bargaining chips with the mainland China. Dr. Zhong, how do you... Uh, I just want to make a distinction between the ROC in Taiwan and ROC is Taiwan. As for KMT, they, uh, stick, uh, they state that ROC in Taiwan, and this is totally different from the DPP's ROC is Taiwan. As for the KMT, ROC in Taiwan refers to that ROC uh, refers to the whole China, not only Taiwan, but also Chinese mainland. But for DPP, they just believe that 
right? ROC is Taiwan, so ROC is equal to Taiwan. So in this way, ROC is Taiwan is a kind of Taiwan independence theory. So as for Taiwan's speech uh, yesterday, I think he, she refers to ROC is Taiwan. That is a kind of Taiwan independence th theory. No wonder there is mm. this popular joke shared by many million observers that ROC actually represents rot into the core mm. the issues <laughs> 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 instead of Republic of China. Uh, a term used by Tsai Ing-wen in her discourse about the future of the cross relations. Well, what do you think of uh, the defiance of Tsai Ing-wen in her response to President, President Xi's policy presentation? I think that uh, when we recall a U.S. election in the last few years, there was a very famous uh, campaign slogan, economy, the stupid. That is for politicians, they want to prolong their political life, they want to run again, but for ordinary people, for their interests, they want a peace, they want a stability, they want a better life. I think that for uh, the betterment for the lives of the Taiwanese people, we need to, no matter what political party is in power, we need to keep in mind the best interests of the people. That put aside. I think that uh, when we recall President Xi Jinping's uh, speech today, he has a very, one very important uh, point. He says that on the basis of a 1992 consensus and on the common basis of opposition to Taiwan independence, he calls upon political parties from both sides, he calls upon organizations from both sides to come to a democratic uh, consultation. And let's, he said, let's talk about and let's think about, brainstorm about the, the best ways of two systems. What kind of system would, be, would, would, would suit under this one framework of one China? Because now we used to have a system, one China, uh, two systems, one, uh, the, one uh, the Hong Kong type was a Macau uh, type, and for the one country, two, two systems, I think uh, scholars from both sides, and uh, we need to come together and then to talk about what would be the, the best. But I'm afraid that the DPP is a pro-secession political force in Taiwan, and also currently a ruling party in the island. Had done a lot, has done a lot to discredit the <coughs> Hong Kong or Macau model uh, mm. for reunification. They say, hey, look at the umbrella protests in the streets in Hong Kong uh, that, that, that happened a few years ago. And they said, today's Hong Kong is uh, the tomorrow of Taiwan. Now, Joanna, wh what do you think of, uh, mm. say, the insistence by the DPP, despite the negative impact of their uh, setbacks in the local elections? that any dialogue across the Taiwan Street must be conducted on the basis of government to government authorized by people on both sides. Now, he see, she seems to have played or has been playing the issue of a soft power like democracy and she asked over and over the mainland to give a clear definition about what democratic oversight actually means for the constructive dialogue between the two sides. Now, can I have your uh, perspective in analyzing the defiance of Tsai Ing-wen. Well, I think this is a very difficult thing for Tsai Ing-wen to answer, because while she insisted on human rights, democracy, rule of law in Taiwan, it is very clear that under her regime, Taiwan is becoming a illiberal de democracy. Illiberal de democracy was a phrase coined by uh, Zakaria to describe a place that has a form of democracy but not real liberty. So Taiwan has deteriorated quite a bit under Tsai Ing-wen's rule. And now mainland China by Mr. Xi Jinping has opened a new direction, especially in today's talk. Mr. Xi has openly discussed a engagement policy that would not only allow Taiwanese to participate in mainland China in a political way, but also to have multiple parties recommending representatives to discuss the cross-strait future. And that invitation to an open door policy, that invitation to a direct confrontation, co consultation and negotiation for the future, one country, two systems, or one country, two administrations, is something that come at a time when DPP is at its weakest, 
in practicing democracy, and mainland China is in its strongest in economic development. So while the two sides have shown ebb and flow over the last years, this time Xi Jinping offered Tsai Ing-wen something that is really, really hard for DPP to refuse. Because if DPP refuses to engage in such a discussion, Mr. Xi Jinping also opened the door for other, for other parties to represent or to send representatives to such a negotiating table. Geopolitically, despite the staunch support by Washington for the uh, status quo of Taiwan, yeah. this island has only has official links or relationship with only a few small states across the world in terms of the official recognition of Taipei. Now, um, what do you think of the issue of uh, breathing space? Because uh, during the years of Ma Ying-jeou, former mm -hmm. leader of Taiwan, he was head of uh, KMT, uh, now the opposition party in Taiwan. He called for uh, uh, no uh, reunification, no use of force, and no independence. Mm -hmm. Today, do you think Tsai Ing-wen has moved back a little bit? And what do you think of uh, uh, the... Because uh, over the course of uh, two decades, I've interviewed many senior politicians, uh, Chinese and foreign alike. For example, Dr. Boutus Boutkali, former uh, chief, UN chief mm -hmm. and the former sec Secretary of Defense of the United States, uh, William Perry, they both said Taiwan has no future. Look at the deep integra uh, economic integration and the official recognition of Taiwan by just mm -hmm. a few uh, small states. So uh, looking into the future, well <laughs> And uh, no wonder President Xi said over and over that independence of Taiwan would only meet a dead end. What does that mean? I think that President Xi uh, now points to the future, the right direction for both sides of the Taiwan Straits. Peace and, uh, and national uh, uh, rejuvenation, that would be the goal, that would be the best future for both uh, sides of the Taiwan Strait. Uh, and then uh, when you look at the other the side, for instance, the 1992 consensus, I don't think that would be uh, that difficult or impossible for political politicians uh, to, to accept. Because 1992, when the KMT and the Chinese mainland uh, uh, counterparts, when they talk about how to proceed day-to-day -day management of the of contacts. They said that now we have, this we have the basic recognition that there is only but one China. And then during day-to-day -day con contact, neither side is going to touch the political connotation of what one China means. So I think that uh, uh, one China, uh, two systems are now with the 1992 consensus. It contains both the principle and the flexibility. Let me go back to Dr. Zhong. <coughs> uh, let's look at what the Coenger, mayor of Taipei, says recently. Uh, this guy who had a strong, uh, deep green political background exactly. uh, uh, now became a representative of of those who have no party affiliations and won the uh, uh, election for the mayor of Taipei said recently uh, people in Taipei have strong reservations about how to give a clear definition about the one China principle of uh, the notion of a one family because uh, uh, President Xi Jinping said that we Chinese would never fight Chinese uh, in a civil war. So wh what do you think of uh, his insistence that uh, um, more efforts uh, should be made to renew the definition about one China principle, because he says this is too politically charged. Uh, as for Kamenjo, I think uh, he is very flexible, very pragmatic. Just as you say, in the past uh, he was deep-rooted, but after he became... He was deep-rooted in the deep green. Uh, deep-rooted deep in deep green, exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, after uh, he became the mayor of Taipei, uh, now she, uh, he changed his uh, st uh, standpoint and uh, he publicly stated that he recognized the two sides belong to 
uh, one, one family, one family. family, just one family, not one China. But uh, I think that would be okay since uh, actually the uh, the two sides indeed is one family and, uh, and also one China. Only in the background of one China should the uh, two sides belong to one family. So in this way, he can actually indirectly uh, recognize that the two sides belong to one China. As for the one country, two system, this uh, 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 theory, I think uh, this idea is, uh, uh, is already blanketed in Taiwan. So that's the reason why uh, uh, Ke proposed that the Chinese mainland should, uh, get, uh, should prepare more efforts to clarify what is one country and what is two systems. And uh, in, for this reason, I think the uh, President Xi clearly stated that we will prepare a Taiwan type, as just uh, Ambassador Suga said, or a uh, Taiwan model or Taiwan formula. Does uh, it mean there will be big differences between the model of Hong Kong of and course. that? Of, of course, in the future. because we, uh, the Chinese mainland is, uh, or uh, is uh, continue to develop its uh, ideas, its deployed. But de whatever the mainland advocated for has been demonized and discredited by the DPP for years. So let me go to Joanna Lei. Um, Given the growing tensions between the two biggest economies, uh, I'm talking about the trade war, but also trade war, a lot in the mainland uh, pointed out, is only a tip of a huge iceberg in terms of the geopolitical rivalry and the competitions between Washington and Beijing, you launched uh, unilaterally by President Trump and his super hawkish uh, team in the D.C. Now, uh, do you think Taiwan would turn out to be the most dangerous and devastating flashpoint among all other uh, dangers such as the Korean Peninsula, the Oi Islands and the South China Sea. China? Well, I'm currently in Sabah, which is at the bottom of the U lines. And looking from this perspective, I certainly hope that Taiwan will not be the flashpoint. The United States has have established a really strong battle line. Indo-Pacific, from Indian Ocean all the way through Hawaii and the west coast of the United States. And with such a long line, Taiwan holds a very critical position. Therefore, I think Mr. Xi Jinping made it extremely clear to the quote-unquote external forces that if anybody should try to meddle with the cross-strait issues, that certainly would include the United States or Japan, Taiwan will probably receive the short end of all the political and potential military consequences. And I do hope that the leadership in Taiwan, especially Tsai Ing-wen, will hear this clearly because with all the open door invitation, there is a very clear precondition, the condition precedent of a peaceful unification and open discussion for cross-strait issues resolution is a one China policy or one China perspective. With that being recognized by Tsai Ing-wen, everything can be discussed, consulted. And if that is not established, and especially when the United States come into this particular issue, then Taiwan will be in a really dangerous place. So I think the key holds in two people's hands, Tsai Ing-wen and Donald Trump. Very quickly, to conclude our discussion here about the future of Taiwan, Ambassador Su Ge, do you think the devastating setback of DPP in the local elections has somehow cushioned and softened the tone of <coughs> Madam Tsai Ing-wen, the pro-secession, a die-hard pro-secession activist, to achieve independence of Taiwan? And of course, uh, mainland China opposes strongly any intervention by the external forces or anybody outside uh, big China to interfere with the internal affairs uh, of Taiwan. Well, <coughs> now we have China. a Chinese analogy, which Mainland compares China. the people to the water. It can ho uphold the boat, it can overturn it. Thank you so much. With that, we come to the conclusion of this discussion in commemoration of the 40th anniversary of an open message to the competitors of Taiwan that was delivered by Mr. Ye Jianying, late chairman of the National Committee, the Standing Committee of the NPC. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.